All right, let me take a moment and show you how to take a Schoology pre or sorry, a Google presentation and embed it inside something that you need to use in Schoology. So this is my Google presentation, um, just typical slides that I would normally do in maybe like a lecture. Um, but I want my students to be able to have access to these slides and kind of go at their own pace. So what I need to do is I need to prepare my Google presentation. So I'm in Google and I'm at my presentation and I'm going to go ahead and go to file and publish to web. This is going to give me a couple options. One of them is to create a link, which I don't want to do, I want an embed code because I want to take this presentation and embed it somewhere else like in Schoology. Um, this gives me a few options. One option I might recommend is to change your slide size to small. The reason I choose small is because a lot of students use Schoology on their phone. They use the app or whatever they're doing and their phone screen size is fairly small. If you do the other sizes like medium or large, it'll still work, but it won't really be aesthetically pleasing and they might need to be pinching and resuming in order to get to it. So choosing a small size is typically really good. Now, this right here, auto advanced slides, this only applies if they click the play button or if I start slideshow as soon as a player loads, which I don't want to do. I, I want my students to be able to control it. Um, so this, this setting doesn't really matter. You can change it if you want, um, but I don't select slide slideshow soon to player loads and I don't select restart the slideshow after the last slide, but that's up to you if you wanna change those as well. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click publish and it's gonna ask me if I really wanna do that. I, I do, I wanna publish it. And then I'm gonna go ahead and get this embed code. It says push control copy. So I can push control C or you can right click and click on copy, either one is fine. Now I'm gonna to jump to Schoology. This is where I my students see the work. I'm gonna go ahead and click on add material. And because these are just notes, they're not really doing anything but taking notes, I'm just gonna add a page that they can view. So notes. All right, giving them, giving them a little bit of instructions is really good, right? So take notes using the following presentation in your notebook. You can also add more direction. Maybe you can say, take notes from this slide to that slide, but that's all I really want them to do is to take notes. Now, here's where I'm going to use my embed code. To do that, I'm going to come to insert content and I'm going to choose image slash media. My content is a media, it's a presentation. I'm not uploading something because what I'm doing is I'm pulling it from the web. Um, and my type is media because I it published it to the web, I can now pull it from the web. And so this is where I'm gonna click on media and then I'm gonna go ahead and paste my embed code by pushing control V or you can also right click and click paste and then insert. All right, that's basically it. We're done with all the hard work. Once I click create, my, my page now is ready for students to view. So this is what that will look like. So here it is, it says take notes and then the students can see this. So students can advance the presentation just by clicking in the middle. It's kind of like it's in a kiosk mode. Um, they can also use the forward and the back button or they can jump around. If they click this play button, that's where that setting applies with the timing setting where it's either five seconds or 10 seconds. That will auto advance for them at that. But most of my students don't use that. They can even use this cool little pointer if they really want to. Um, but that's about it. Now, this embed code is really useful. You can use it in a lot of places. For example, I'm gonna go back. Um, here's a note. So we took a quiz, and I just wanna show you how we can use that embed codes in a little bit more advanced uh, places. So here, for example, is my slides again, and I embedded them in, a, in the beginning of a quiz in the instructions. Again, take notes, and I said, use your notes to help you with the check-in quiz. So after they're done taking notes, then they start a new attempt and then they can take a quiz um, questioning them about things that they learned in the notes. So you can do that. You can embed it really in anything in Schoology. Uh, in any of these materials, most of them allows you to add embed codes. And so try a few things out. You can do it in an assignment, uh, embed those notes in there. But that's how you embed Schoology stuff into I'm uh, sorry, how you embed Google presentations into Schoology stuff. Uh, you could be done with the video right now, but I do want to show you one advanced setting. Uh, I would say if you're queasy, if I say the word HTML or coding, then don't do this. This is really advanced. But if you're not shying, shying away from a little bit of coding, this is kind of a cool setting. Um, what I'm looking at is in my presentation, maybe I want students to start at a specific slide. I know for me, I have notes that are for an entire unit, usually on one slide or on one presentation. And maybe I don't want my students to start at the beginning of the presentation. Maybe I want them to start at a different slide. For example, maybe I want them to start here at slide seven. 
Well, think of your URL up here. Again, I'm going to just say, um, if you don't like coding, don't do this. Find a different way. But if you're okay with coding or you want to try something new, this is kind of neat. But what I was going to say, think of your Google presentation as an apartment complex, right? And so here up here is the URL or the address to your presentation. Now, in your apartment complex, there's lots of rooms, right? So here's an apartment one, here's apartment two, apartment three, apartment four, apartment five. Now, just like the US Postal Service or just like an address, your presentation has an overall address, but each room also has the sub address. Think apartment one or apartment two. So I'm going to come to my specific slide that I want students to go directly to when they load Schoology. And what I need to do is I need to pull that apartment number, which is slide seven. Now, this slide seven is mostly convenience for me. The URL actually has a different ID. So I'm going to come up here. This is the address that the web knows to go to this specific slide. If I copy this and paste it in a new address, it's going to jump me to that specific slide. So how does it do that? Well, if you look up at this whole address up here, right? Like I said, this is the address of the apartment. And if you look at the very end, Right here it says number slide equals ID. This part right here is what tells the web, what it tells the Internet Explorer or Google Chrome to go to this specific slide. So I'm gonna go ahead from this point where it says number or pound slide equals ID, I'm gonna go ahead and copy that control C, just this little small section right here. Now I'm gonna go jump back to my notes on Schoology. So I'm going back to Schoology. So here are my notes. Notice when I load the slide, it's always gonna start at the beginning, but I wanna change that. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this page. This is my presentation, but I need to go a little bit to the background information. So this is where I can go right up here and it says switch to HTML. So this is the coding. This is the back end stuff that Schoology pays attention to that typically we wouldn't have to worry about. But I'm gonna go ahead and change my iframe code. So this is that code, that embed code that we copied and pasted from Google. Now, if you look in here, there's, it says iframe source. So this is the source. This is that address. Notice it starts with a quotation and I'm going to go ahead and highlight it for you but right here this is that address that 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 this frame is looking to on the web for my presentation and I just need to edit this address a little bit to do that I'm going to go right to the end of the quotation it says delay MS equals and then it might be a number here maybe it says 10,000 or it might say 5,000 or whatever I'm going to go ahead and paste right after that my slide my apartment number or the address that I copied and then I'm going to go ahead and click save changes when I do that, notice that when this page loads, it's going to start me on that other page in my presentation, right? If I change pages and come back, it's always going to restart me at that one slide that I chose. So kind of a cool advanced setting. Now just note, students can always go backwards. They can always go forward. So they can choose to bypass your slide after they load it. But at least I know it's always going to load on that one slide. So I usually add a little bit more in my instructions to say, hey, students, take notes starting at slide seven, which is going to auto load for you and keep going. Don't worry about things before slide seven. Now choose to use that if you want. You don't have to. Um, there's lots of other ways to do it, but I just thought that was a really cool thing that you could do. All right. Good luck embedding people presentations into things.